The biggest surprise for me in starting to work at a mortuary is that I thought I was really comfortable with death because I was interested in it academically and I had been studying it for years and I was like, well, actual dead bodies, I'm all over that. It's just the inert corpse. But when I actually got into working with it, the dead bodies were so powerful and being around them was so just philosophically and emotionally more difficult than I thought it was. And that's kind of what alerted me to the fact that we're really distant from dead bodies in, in this country and maybe we shouldn't be. A lot of the crematories in America now are more industrial than you would think. It really is kind of an industrial environment in the sense that you walk into this room and it's almost a warehouse and then there are these two huge metal machines and they're roaring, like a really deep roar. And um, it's, not a, it's not a pleasant environment. It's not what you're imagining when you think of a mortuary. You're thinking of your grandmother's living room and it's gonna be all pastels and flowers and very welcoming. But a lot of them aren't. It's very intense and it's not someplace you necessarily want your dead body to go. It used to be that we were very comfortable being around death in the sense of the actual physical corpse and dead body. And we had the body in the house and we washed it and we shrouded it and we kept it in our living room. And then what happened is that we started to become, I guess, industrialized or sterilized in a lot of ways in the medical industry, in the burgeoning funeral industry, and death really got taken out of the home and away from people and put back or put into the hands of people who were professionals quote unquote. And every time a body went to a professional as opposed to the family, you can understand it in a way because it is easier. It, gr grief is hard and death is hard. And if you can just pay somebody to take that body away from you, you can see the appeal of that. But in doing that and just giving the body up, I think we lose a lot of our connection to mortality and our connection to community and family. When I was eight years old, I saw a girl fall off the second balcony, second floor balcony of a mall. And when I heard her body hit the ground, it just changed my life in the sense that it alerted me to the fact that death was very possible and death was always just like a hair's breath away from happening to me or anybody that I knew. And that was at eight years old, that was a really <laughs> sort of pint-sized existential discovery. and. I do think my whole life has, I mean, it's, it's easy to say like, oh, she had a really tragic experience when she was young, that's why she's weird, or that's why she's obsessed with death. And I don't think that's what's going on. Um, I think that I do just have a lot of natural morbidity, but there is something to be said for trying to engage with the problems of your childhood as an adult. And I think we're all kind of doing that a little bit. I was extremely worried all the time about death and I tried to do things somehow negotiating with the universe to make sure that it didn't happen like jumping over cracks and, and tapping my nose a certain amount of times and pretty traditional OCD behaviors. Um, and that definitely went away as I got older. I didn't struggle with it in high school or anything, but I think what it shifted to was just trying to beat those fears by being really engaged with death, really interested in it um, in an academic way, um, looking at death rituals and death culture and, and death morbid entertainment of, of all sorts. And I wouldn't say that I was a goth. I think that's, I mean, I was from Hawaii, so we had a goth scene, but I don't think that I was necessarily a part of it. I think I was just a morbid enthusiast. But what, if there was a goth scene, what would it have looked like? Oh, there was totally there was totally a goth scene in Hawaii growing up. Um, there was two clubs, one called Flesh and one called The Dungeon. And we used to sneak out and go to them when I was like 16 and like sleep in the car or by the side of the road. And um, yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think Florida has a really big goth scene too. I think in cities where it's very sunny and you would expect that there wouldn't be all of these creatures of the night emerge at the end of the day, because you have to counteract the beauty, constant beauty and sunshine somehow. 
After I'd been working at the crematory for a couple months, we had what's called a witness cremation. And a witness cremation is when people come in to watch the body be loaded into the cremation machine. People really rarely did this. And we got one family that was a Chinese family and we go into the crematory with them and all of a sudden they start wailing and falling to the ground and beating the ground. And it is a practice in China to have hired mourners who sort of are there to jazz up the crowd, I guess, like Laker girls or something. Um, but I don't know if they actually were hired mourners because I don't know where they would get those in Oakland where I was working. Um, but it was really fascinating because that level of grief being demonstrated and that openness about grieving, whether you were a man or a woman or a child, um, was something I had never seen before, certainly not in American death customs. There are, there are places like Indonesia where they keep the body in the home for months after the person dies and they're actively a part of the decomposition process and then they're actively a part of dealing with the body for months if not years to come after the person dies and I don't know that that's a model that we should be looking to in America but the American optimism that says you know, I, I'm so positive that death shall not enter my viewpoint at all is not really working f for us. I think that if we can get families more involved, so the family feels like they're getting more out of the death experience, that's going to be a really good thing. And it, I'm not saying that people are going to give up on funeral directors altogether. That's never going to happen. That's my magical pipe dream, but that's not what's going to happen. People are going to um, become more involved and I think that's going to happen but I don't I don't think funeral directors should feel threatened I think they should find a way to work within this new paradigm and realize that they still have a place but it's not going to be take the body away and hide it and shall not speak its name